Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello there my friends. This is Kevin Lopez back again from Personal Tutors. It's been some long time since we haven't been able to go ahead and provide sessions to you. Well, today again in the series we are bringing you the standard 6 material. Now, the book is Honeysuckle and for our little friends out there, we have started explaining the standard 6 chapter from NCRT syllabus in the English section. The poem's name is The Kite. It's a beautiful poem, a short poem written in for certain young minds, certain beautiful hearts with some innocence. It's about a bird known as the kite. My friends, you must be knowing what a kite is. So that what is explained in this poem especially about this bird and the beauty that it carries along while it flies, while it comes down and does quite a number of things. So, the line wise explanation can be made right now is like how bright on the blue is a kite when it's new. Well, how bright on the blue. My friends, the blue is the sky and it is said that the kite while soaring up in the sky seems so beautifully natural that everybody looks at it and enjoys the soaring thing, the soreness, the simplicity, the sharpness, the agility of this bird. With, with a dive and a dip, it snaps its tail, then soars like a ship with only a sail. With a dive and a dip, my friends, usually it's about the kite that is going to hunt or catch its prey. My little friends, when you see the kite dipping down to catch its prey, it's just like a single dive. He attacks with the sharpness of an arrow and then grabs the prey that it has and then soars like a ship with only a sail. It just gives a sail, a single sail to its wings my friends and once again it's gone up there somewhere. Now that's the beauty how a kite comes, catches the prey and just a single wave of the wings he rushes away. Then it goes as, as over tides of wind it rides. That means it rides over the tides that means the motion of the waves that is in the ocean here the poet, that is Harry Behan, has gone ahead and said us that the kite comes down, catches the prey, moves out like a ship with only a sail and it's riding on the tides of the air. That means the waves of the air that are almost invisible to us. But the kite seems to be watching them, has more knowledge about them and thus can definitely use them as waves. Climbs to the crest of a gust and pulls, then seems to rest as the wind falls. Now it climbs to the crest of gust and pulls. It just soars up there and when the gust of wind comes, it uses it to get even and again go up there in the skies and perhaps eat its prey or keep it back there in its nest or anything my friends. This is now beautifully explained then seems to rest as wind falls. Then it seems to rest as the wind falls because it just keeps its wings open and keeps on roaming. When strings go slack you wind it back and when, when strings go slack you wind it back. You know it said that whenever the wind actually seems to be ending up or the flow or the height starts to come down this little bird, the magnificent bird, it comes am am among the genre of birds of prey. So this bird actually gets back the length, the height by waving some more 
it actually soars its wings once again with a few more winds so that it again gains the height friends here we can see that this is beautifully mentioned as if when the wind stops this bird winds its wings or when it's declining it winds its wings and once again reaches the top so it's like winding a string of a maybe a spring of a watch or anything and run until a new breeze blows and its wings fill and up it goes when string goes slack you wind it back and run until a new breeze blows and its wings feel fill and up it goes now it is said that it winds the spring until the new gusts of wind comes and once the wind comes in it actually goes ahead flying once again so it is beautifully mentioned over here my friends how bright on the blue is a kite when it's new but a raga ragada thing you'll never we will see when it flaps on a string on a top of a tree now here it is very peculiarly mentioned my friends in the last stanza that but a raga the thing you will never see my friends what does the raga daga term mean the raga daga term when it flaps on a string is actually the term used here for the ferocity of the kite that when it sits when it goes and tries to sit on a string that is a tree branch or a twig or a mountain side the motion seems to be quite different the serenity the things around is kind of missing that is what is mentioned over here beautifully written by harry behan an author quite famous for children's poem and keeping the language quite simple so we here have gone ahead and explained you the chapter now let's look at a few question and answers so the question here is how does the poet describe the beauty of a kite the poet describes the beauty of a kite while flying in the sky comparing it to the new genre of something that has just come out in the blue sky and it also waves its swings beautifully to change its direction the poet has in fact influenced the motion of the kite as a ship's sail in the sea that's how he has beautified when does the kite become ragged well it becomes ragged when it's entangled in the branches of trees now it flutters its wings my friends now here we can guess the meaning the ragged the ragada now the ragada is basically when this beautiful bird gets entangled in the branches of the tree it really tries to get hard out of them sometimes the wings are torn that's what has been explained here what thing will you collect for making a kite well following things are looking forward have been explained so it gives a metamorphic thing now here the explanation of this poem can be given out in two major phenomenons the first one being of a bird that's a kite the second one being of a kite that is made up of paper and when it flies up there you know and it soars up high you just make it fly it wings without the sail or something and the second remaining when the kite is dangled in the branches it's torn it's usually torn you can't get it back 
So there have been metamorphical meanings of this poem connecting it to the bird, connecting it to the materialistic thing that we use to fly. Perhaps there have been speculations and each and every phenomena suit over here. How does the new kite look? The new kite looks bright. How does it snap its tail? It snaps its tail with a dive and a dip. How does the poet compare the kite to a ship? Well, the, the kite is compared to the ship when the poet actually sees it soaring up there without any jerks or moments. Now, for you especially my friends, I would suggest that to my top left is an information button. If you click at this button, you will be going ahead and you will be directed towards the link, towards the Prema link of the channels. And also, I would suggest you that to my right, you will be having an annotation button where you can actually see that the link to the videos are there. We have been giving out certain factoids for you, certain chapters for, from all the series of CBSC. Thus, I would suggest you to subscribe our channel as well. If you want to know something about us, please press the button about us. And as I said to you earlier, just go ahead and check out the permalinks that have been given at the right hand side of mine. So thank you very much today my friends for attending my session. It was nice to have you. Such beautiful thing. See you again.